all right guys welcome to the civil writing master class in this class i'm going to learn how to professionally communicate your skills and experiences when you're applying for a job so let's us first of all get to know me my name is endurance obp um, i'm a web developer and digital marketer i'm someone who's passionate about growth and development in humans, business, and literally the world at large. All right, so I'm going to be your trainer for this civil writing masterclass. Now, first of all, it's not enough to just learn a skill. The real question is, can you market it to the world? How can you professionally communicate your expertise, your skills, your experiences to your recruiter? If you say you are a digital marketer, how can you professionally tell the world that you can boost sales when you are given a chance to? You may not really be excellent at what you do, but if you can sell yourself as excellent, then you can learn the job and then you can learn on the job to improve yourself. But on the other hand, you can be really good, really excellent, really great at what you do, but if you can't market yourself to the world, how will you even learn the job? Now this way having a great CV comes in. So in this masterclass, we'll cover everything about civil writing. We'll also include tips to construct a professional language when writing a CV. Now, it's one thing to learn a skill. It's another thing to sell yourself, like I just said. Okay, let's just look at it this way. This is a very good example. Now, you produced a biscuit and I also produced a biscuit. Both of us, like both of our products have the same content, right? But my packaging will determine how well people will rush my products once it enters the market. Now, if you package your biscuit poorly for an audience who is probably children or younger adults, they won't get attracted to it. Okay, because the packaging will first of all discourage them from even knowing what the content is. But if your package is appealing and attractive, they'd want to know the content. When you take a child to a shop, or a store and you want to get um, the child a biscuit they may, they may not even know like what the content of that particular biscuit is maybe it's a new biscuit in town but because of the way it is it, it is packaged the, the color of the wrapper and stuff like that the child will just say oh i want this particular biscuit it's not as if they know if the biscuit is sweet or not maybe the biscuit is probably not even as sweet okay but because of the package they'll just tell you ah I want this blue wrapper or I want this yellow wrapper so that's that's just exactly what it is your CV can you know tell your your CV is what will give um, the creature the it's what will make you know make them make a very good decision when employing for um, a job so in like manner your CV should be appealing in a way that people would want to know who possess such CV and you know would want to meet that person so in summary, your CV is just a summary of yourself that you first sent to your recruiters. It's your first impression where you tell them what you can do, what you've been doing before and what more you intend to do. From there, like I said, they can now make you know decisions, they can ascertain if you're fit for the job you are applying for. So now let's talk about employee and personal branding before we go into um, CV writing proper. Now you know how you see various um, brands on social media, how they package themselves and you just wish you work for that brand. You see pictures, they take a walk, you know, their team, um, team page on social media and stuff like that. How they are branded tees and you just want to have that feel of, you know, I work with such organization, right? So, so employees should brand themselves in a way that employers will wish or want to have them in their company now there are three major ways to brand yourself as an employee number one is having a great cv number two is having a great linkedin profile and number three is having a great cover letter but for this class we are strictly going to talk, going to be talking about having a good cv subsequently we would, we would create classes where we can talk about LinkedIn profile optimization and cover letter writing so let us get to know types of cv i'm sure most people don't even know we have types of cv right you just want to apply for a job you see um and uh okay you see a job opening and you want to apply for a job you just go and meet your dad or maybe your older brother like ah, 
give, give me your CV so I can, you know, tell us something like that. <laughs> you just copy and paste CVs from your friends or, you know, everybody. Well, we are going to know kinds of CV and which type of CV will suit you. At least it depends on the kind of work you are applying for and your, um, also how, um, how much of work experience you have. So first of all, we have the functional CV. And this is mostly used when applying for a job and you do not have a lot of experience on that field. But you have the skills. For example, you just learned um, brand identity design and you're very good with the skill, but you've not really had any good work experience or opportunity to work and gather the experience in there for that position. For most um, people who just started in um, brand identity design, what was you known as graphic design, right? They probably have just been doing freelance jobs for their friends, you know, help them design flyers. They've never really worked with a brand, like a real brand. They've just been doing freelance work. Now, what you need if you're applying for a position for the first time, of, you know, first time of working with a brand is a functional CV because it simply lists all your skills and highlights of what you've been doing or can do with those skills. For example, you can write if you've been taking courses or volunteering or any work you've done with those skills, which most times they're just minor jobs. Now we have the chronological CV. This is a CV where you highlight majorly your work experience from the most recent to the outdated ones with highlights of what you do and how you can be of value to the company you are applying to. This is your CV you need when you have a good number of work experience, a good number of you know, years of experience. You've, you've worked for the past five years, for the past six years. What you need is a chronological CV because you have the experience. You can, you know, you can highlight your experience. And then number two is the Miss CV, which we most time make use of because it talks about your skills and work experience. Um, okay, let me really. The major difference between these two CVs is that the Miss CV, you probably have worked for a year or two. You have just, you know, few experience. Okay. Then you can say your CV is a Miss CV, but a chronological CV is a CV where you have like a good number of experience like five years seven years you know upward that's why it's called chronological cv so so when next when next you're crafting a cv know the kind of cv that suits you if you're applying for a first time job there's no need of you copying a, a chronological cv and pasting it in yours and just editing the details it will work all right so now we're going to um talk about this sample cv um first of all if you want to um, come up with a CV, you can use tools like um, uh, Microsoft Word or Canva. Most people use Canva, but I just prefer using MS Word. Okay. Or you use your Docs, whichever. You can use your, your Google Docs. Alright, so now let's take, uh, let's, uh, let us analyze the CV and talk about all the sessions. This is what a CV should look like. So first of all, um, the first part of a CV is the heading or header, whichever way you want to call it. Um, now this, uh, this is the part that um, contains information about you, your name, your mobile number, email address, location, and um, a link to your portfolio or uh, LinkedIn profile. So first of all, your name, your name is your name, just write it. Um, first name first, middle name, then last name. That should be the format. Do not write your last name first on your CV. It's very, very wrong. Now, um, talking about your phone number, it's advisable to always write it in international format because you, you don't know where your CV will get to. Most people just send CVs for any kind of jobs. Like, and, uh, and also, if you are applying for a role outside the country, probably you, you are um, a software engineer you're in Nigeria and you're applying for a job probably in Canada or Dubai, UK, it's always advisable you use um, international formats, all right? And then your email address should be standard. It should contain your name. If your name is John Paul, your email address should be johnpaul at gmail.com or johnpaul99 at gmail.com. Your name cannot be John Paul and your email address says Sarah Matthew at gmail.com. It doesn't make sense, right? And also, 
don't make use of um, email address like prettylady at gmail.com or softdude at gmail.com those kind of emails would jeopardize your chances of gaining employment okay your, your email address should be standard it should contain your name in it and then also your location for security reasons do not put your full location number 99 west lane street opposite girls high school abuja nigeria no make use of your city and state or your state and country for example leki lagos akure ondo or abuja nigeria kaduna nigeria Delta nigeria right I, I hope that that's clear don't put your full house address it's very wrong so now to your profile summary uh, most people here they would say professional summary others would say career objective now let me tell you the difference if it's a functional cv write career objective because you've not have you've not had any good work experience you cannot say professional summary just say career objective like the name sounds career objective it's it shows that okay you've not really had a good work experience but you are ready to work with an organization to you know grow your career okay but some people will just say profile summary now this is this is a place where you need to sell yourself sell your ability sell your skills your professor will determines if you will get the job or not not even your skills because most most people can you know just pick up any skill they, they think of and write but this professor the way you craft it will determine if the recruiter will take you seriously or not make use of words like dedicated highly competent words like highly competent you know just list out the skills you possess okay the first line of this summary says dedicated computer science graduate with expertise in software programming technical support database management personnel management and administrative support when you read something like this you, you would be interested in knowing more of what this person can do right so you should make use of professional language language that makes you look you know excellent and great at that skill you may not even be that great but just make use of words be good with words words that will make you look like yes you can actually do this stuff and then you can always learn on the job this is how people get to learn high paying job even with little or no experience because they can sell themselves when we started um i said it's not is is one thing to have a um, skill right and it's another thing to be able to sell yourself to the world you have this skill how can you communicate it that yes if you give me an, an opportunity i'll be able to you know do this and do this and do this for your company so after your profile summary the next um the next section is your core competencies or you can say skills or you can say skills and competencies they mean the same thing um uh, okay i'm going i would have to say this here for most people who have various skills try not to have do not have one CV for all your skills. All the job you're applying for, you have one CV. And then when it comes to your skill session, you just mix up all the skills you have. It's very wrong. When writing an email, it should be addressed to a particular role, a particular responsibility. You cannot be applied as a brand identity designer. And in your skills and competencies, you are writing HTML, CSS. Even if you possess such, such skill, what will you use them to do? As a graphic designer you can see that they are so unrelated okay so if you're applying for a job research about that job what skills most people when they uh, when they are posting job opportunities they will, uh, they will outline the requirements right you see the skills needed research more on that job to know more of the skills and the ones you have you put them there don't just put random skills because yes you possess the skills you just put them there it's very wrong for um okay for this cv see uh, his core competencies project management data analysis cyber security all of them are you know are related to the um, role he's applying for right okay now um after your um skills or your competencies the the next part is your career highlights although most, most people do not really write career highlights they just go to work experience but it's also okay to write your career highlights it's just another variation of your summary <laughs> okay um in a career highlight session just talk about what you do 
in that particular career like okay you are a software developer you are applying for the role of a software developer in a company right okay what are your career highlights like what does your car what what does your what do you do in that career you can see for this he said spearheaded and unorganized a summer programming camp for two departments in our university where basic of, of programming such as website design graphic design game development were thought this is just like another it's a work experience session but it's different from a natural work experience session so you can you can have a career highlight it's not um compulsory it's optional and then work experience okay i'm going to talk about this work experience and i'm going to tell you what to do if you don't have a work experience so first of all if you have a work experience you first of all start by writing the the position you occupied in caps like like you can see here personal assistant and then underneath it you write the the company or the 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 brand or the organization you worked with and then you list out in bullet points what you did it's not enough to say okay i was a personal assistant at nasarawa open development board what did you do if you really worked there what did you do they want to know what you've done not where you've worked so highlight what you did improved feeling of documents by creating a system of storage of information um and documents just highlight everything you did application developer it turned technical assistant it turned just write everything you did and then when writing the dates by your right hand always write it in a month and year format it's very wrong to say 2020 to 2021 it is deceptive it doesn't really show how long you worked I know to, to some persons the first thing that comes to your mind is one year when when a year 20, 2020 to 2021 you, you just feel okay that's one year but if i start up a job at um, okay let's say first of december 2020 and i left first of january 2021 how long have i worked for one month it could even be less if i probably started let's say midway december let's say 15th december and i left first january um the following year that's like a few weeks right so just writing here it's very deceptive they, they want to know like what what was the actual duration how long did you spend with this company so always write it in months december 2020 to january 2021 they will know that oh you worked for one month okay always write it month and year now what to do when you don't have a work experience okay you, you can see here the first experience he wrote was nyc so if you're a fresh graduate capture your nyc experience under your work experience it is valid to put your nyc there it is very very valid and also it's advisable for you not to be idle you are learning this skill take up task for free so you can have something to show for on your cv one time at a seminar um, the speaker said if you're a web developer build your first TV website for free and we all shouting no ah, why would I well he said okay if I want a web developer and you you walked up to me and say oh sir I can help you build a website and I said okay let me see your works what have you done and then you told me um actually you know actually um actually you are just saying actually there's nothing to show for it even if you have a certificate you actually learn the skill if I can't say anything, I would I would not even think of giving the job to you, right? So to have something on your CV, if you're learning a skill, try to freelance with it. If you if if you can't get um, paying clients, take up tasks for free. You're a brand identity designer. Design files for your friends for free, so you can have something to show for in your portfolio. Other than just sit and say, uh, I I have not seen anybody to work with. Just do source for free. For free i'm a web um, de developer my first three websites i did them for free i'm a content creator it's just it's just um it's not really my major work it's not a side house right it's just <laughs> it's just my hobby i just love creating it um if you want me to do a marketing video for you i'll do animation video i'm very good at whiteboard animation all the animations are done I don't think I've ever received any pay for it but if I probably want to apply for a job and uh, it has to do with um, 
you know videos animation i have a lot to show for it even if i've never been paid they won't ask me were you paid for this job no okay so even if i've never been paid i have something to show for it and also after learning the skills try to um, apply for internships it could even be free like an unpaid internship just do it even if it's for like three months so that you can have something to show for on your cv even if you are you are writing a functional cv that does not mean there should be no work experience it's not done anywhere there should be minor task you've taken minor minor task should be there not something major like oh you worked for a big brand like nasara or about development board it could just be you know your friend your friend's brand is trying to start up just make it look like one sushi brand but you and i know it's not a sushi brand right something like that just take up volunteering duties just do anything that will make you you know have something you can call a work experience instead of staying idle it's very wrong so now to the um education sec um section it should be in order okay okay um let's go back to work experience i didn't say the order right it should be from your most recent to your updated ones like you can see here you are not supposed to start from 2015 and then at the bottom we are saying 2022 it's very wrong start from the most recent to the outdated um work also in your education start from the uh, the, the highest degree for example you have a phd it should be phd masters and then bsc right okay so now after the education sec section you have the certifications and training if you have any certification and training put it there if you don't have it's fine but it's always advisable you <laughs> i mean learn a skill in a place where you can actually get certified because it's not about saying i can do this thing people want to see okay have you been certified in this skill you you learned some software development probably you are the youtube kind of person you like learning on youtube you may actually know the skill but there's nothing to show for it right that's why it's advisable to take courses there are so many free courses you can take online free courses on software development on uh product design you know just whatever skills on content creation they are free of um, their organizations offering these skills for free and they will still certify you so it's better to have a certification it adds um this should i say authenticity like it makes it gives weight to what you are saying when you have a certification that's why most people will just say see the only thing i'm looking for like this is your certificate even if i don't even know the skills as far as i'm certified i'll get a job right because people give meanings to your certifications and your recognitions so um okay i think we've come to the end of the cv right and there's this other section most people tend to art especially when you're writing a, a chronological cv um professional membership yes that's the the, the title of the section after your certificate just put professional membership if you're in any professional or uh, board as far as your career is concerned put it there but it's never it's not mostly used it's um it's used for people uh, maybe uh, you're applying for uh, you're applying as a lecturer or you know now all these kind of uh, high profile jobs that you get to see professional membership so this is a brief rundown of how a cv should look like i'm sure with this anyone can come up with a cv it's not something that's uh, that is so tedious so toxic it's just as easy as this just bullet points and highlighting that's what a cv is, is all about it's a summary okay this is not a place to start writing an essay of 450 words how you worked and got sacked <laughs> seriously it's not needed here and then at the beginning i talked about a uh, portfolio link okay you know there are some kind of rules that cv matter less rules like a brand identity designer your cv is more like trash what they want to see is what have you, what you've done your works what okay i want to see um, the designs you make right so if you're applying for such rules that, re that requires you know people seeing your work attach a link to your portfolio after your location or you can put a link to your linkedin profile if you don't have a portfolio you can put a link to your linkedin profile so i guess that's all now let us go to the the next section 
okay so FAQs. I actually wanted this class to be a live class so we could communicate, you know, well, ask questions on the spot, but I couldn't. I just had to, you know, do a recording. So um, I tried to answer a few frequent, frequently asked questions. But if you still have questions you need to ask, you can drop it uh, on the comment section. I'd read them and reply to them. Or you can always um, drop it on our WhatsApp um, community group chats i'll put the link to the description so you can you know find us there so question number one how long should my cv be okay first of all your cv is not a project neither is it a book so it should not be more than two pages no matter your years of experience a cv is a summary not a place to start writing stories okay it's a summary just like you saw the ones the the cv we looked at bullet points just just hi, just highlights of what, of what you did what you can do stuff like that so it should not be more than two pages now people usually ask do they need references in their cv i would say you don't need a reference on your cv it will be asked for when when hiring to check your background so you don't really need it in, in your cv now should i include my age do not include something that that will make it easy for you to get rejected <laughs> things like age your full location your state of origin you don't need such unless you are applying for a bank job or government jobs you don't need bio data on your cv start including your age your marital status your local government of origin your state of origin your mother's state of origin your father's state of origin and you know you don't really need those okay just stick to the example i used here now is voluntary considered a working experience yes it is it is valid you may not have um, done a paid job but if you volunteered in an, org- in an organization capture it on your cv it is very valid in fact 40 percent of recruiters say volunteer duties are equal to a paid job so it doesn't matter if you were paid and beside on your cv you will not even say i wasn't paid just write the position you occupied the name of the company and what you did right so okay the next one career breaks people are always like confused a career breaks necessary it's okay to state your career breaks on your cv on your work experience now what is a career break career break is um it's a time where you you got you cut off work for example on your cv you you highlighted you worked from 2015 to 2017 from 2017 to 2019 and then the next thing we saw was 2021 to 2022 so your recruiter will be wondering what exactly happened between 2017 to 2019 why weren't you working that's what we call a career break you can write it there that oh i probably got off work because of childbirth or relocation it's not as if it's compulsory it's not compulsory to write your career breaks but they will definitely want to know why you didn't work for this number of years right so if it's something not so personal that you can state you can state it if it's something you can't do, just forget about it, alright? So, I, I already talked about adding portfolio links, so I guess we are good to go. So, your CV is your first impression. Don't mess it up. There is nothing like um, having another chance of a first impression. If your recruiters do not find your CV convincing, they will not invite you back for an interview, right? You being invited for an uh, interview shows that they found your CV worthy. So it's your first impression. There's something like, um, okay, my first impression, my second first impression. There's not like a second first impression. You're, you just have a one time opportunity to nail it on the head. A one time opportunity to not miss it because if you miss it, you cannot have a second first impression. <laughs> okay, so always try to make sure your TV is your CV. Sorry. Always try to make sure your CV is well tailored, well written. I'm sure with all I've written, it's okay for anyone to, you know, um, craft a good CV. But if you still think you need extra help, you can always contact me. I'll leave my contact information on the description of this video. If you need extra help, I'll be glad to help you. But I'm sure with what I've said, anyone can go ahead 
craft a good CV and land his or her next job. So here is our contact card for Perry Foundation. Do want to reach us on social media and um, WhatsApp too. That's our WhatsApp contact. Yeah, please WhatsApp only. Thank you. All right, so guys, uh, that will be the end of this class. I'm sure you've, you've, you've learned a lot from this class. You've known better than copy and pasting CVs. You've known better than going online to still drop description and put in your work experience or go online and, you know, pick up random skills to put on your CV. Your CV should not, uh, should not cause conflict to your recruiters. There are some CVs you see and you're like, jeez, what exactly do you mean? <laughs> Seriously, just uh, some, some, when you see some CVs, you, you'll be wondering what, what role is this person applying for? Because I can see graphic design, I can see um, software skills, I can see content skills. Like, what exactly are you applying for? So, always try to make sure your CV is well structured. And, um, okay, so thank you, thank you, thank you, thank you. Watch out for our subsequent videos on LinkedIn profile optimization and writing of a, a great cover letter. So, goodbye, guys. Um, okay. I'll be dropping this document. There is a checklist section after here, but there is no need to go back to them again. I already said everything while analyzing the CV. But because I want to drop the document with you guys, I still have to highlight everything I said. Okay, so um, I'll be dropping the documents on our WhatsApp community group chat. So if you're not part of it, you should join so you can have access to this um, CV writing checklist. You would need it when um writing your cv you may not have the opportunity to come over to you know keep watching the video while you're writing it will be stressful for you but with the checklist you can just okay read through and know what to write on yours right so join the whatsapp community so you can get a copy of this cv writing master class all right guys so have a nice day bye